Ahoy there, YouTube. I uh, figured I'll stop being lazy and finally go ahead and get this stupid engine back together. Oop, as I knock over my tripod. I uh, got the crankshaft speedy sleeve here a few days ago and really just been lazy. Forza Horizon 5 came out and it's getting cold outside, so I've just been lazy these past few weeks, days, about a week now. Either way, it's time I get going on this. So I need to start driving this old Toyota here again because snow is going to start flying before I know it. So. Anyway, let's go ahead and knock this thing on. I gotta do some painting on the oil pan and brackets and some other stuff, and then uh, we'll start slowly slapping things together piece by piece. So, I guess let's get moving, see what happens. Alrighty, well here's the oil pan that is from this car originally. When I had rebuilt this engine about three years ago, roughly, I uh, brought it to work and I cleaned it up and hot tanked it just like this, so super clean inside. And uh, I quick wire wheeled it, and when I wire wheeled it, I was hitting a lot of hard rust that was over here. And if you look carefully, you might be able to see it, but I poked a little hole, let me double check with my finger where it's at, right about there, I don't know if it's very visible or not, but yeah, when I got it back together, I ended up filling this whole side with JV weld, and you can see it kind of filled a little bit up right there, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again this time, but instead of JV weld, I'm going to use RTV because I'm a sucker for pain, so I'm going to go ahead and lay another weld of... Uh, Ultra Gray, Gasket Maker, High Torque, doesn't really specify high temp, but who needs to read instructions? It'll be fine, right? Maybe I'll actually use JB, JB Weld. Let's see what I got. <coughs> oh, man, it stinks in here from spray paint. Oh, look at that. I got a little bit left. Rubber cement. Well, I don't know if rubber cement's exactly going to do what I want. No, that's not that's not right. I think Gorilla Glue is what I'm looking for. I promised I'm more organized than this normally. Yeah, all right, we'll go ahead and use this. Screw it, we'll do it right-ish. So we'll go ahead and throw a layer on there, and then uh, that'll keep that looking halfway decent, and then I'll paint it all up, make it look pretty. While these brackets dry, I'll flip them over and paint them again, and then uh, keep stinking up my garage, because this paint smell is strong. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little life hack here for you. This one's gonna blow your socks off, even though you probably already know about it, because it's not that difficult. But uh, always save me an extra Mountain Dew can, Break off the little tab off the end here, flip it over, look at that, spot to mix your JB weld together. So we'll go ahead and uh, dump some resin in here. Don't put this in your resin brand, it doesn't taste very good. Don't ask me how I know. Please don't ask me how I know, I don't want to tell the story. And we'll add a little bit of hardener. This stuff does the all the hardening. Put a little uh, layer matching about that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and mix her up with the can tab. And then while we got this thing still fresh in our hands, go ahead and layer this baby on here. So let's find where that rust spot was. Looks like it's right about there. We can drop that back on there. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. This is a nice good layer. Get this poison crap all off my fingers. And we'll let that sped it all out so it looks like normal when I put paint over top of it. And then uh, maybe for fun, since we're going this overboard, we might as well keep it up, right? So we'll go ahead and throw a little bit inside of here. Just give this a little more. Since that was the amount actually that I needed to completely stop it from leaking before, but what's a little more gonna hurt? Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. Alrighty, now we'll let that dry for infinity. Then we'll blast it with some paint. Alrighty, well, here's going to be attempt number uno at the crank seal installation, or speedy sleeve installation, I should say. So it comes with a nice installation tool, but the problem is, is uh, the installation tool doesn't fit over the end of the crank. So I don't know exactly how they expect you to do that, so that's just wonderful. Well, a 32 millimeter is going to be our best hope. It seems to fit in there okay. It seems like it's going to maybe want to work. So I guess let's try it. Okay. 
in the thick of this. I'm gonna be rolling. Get this about the center as I can get it. Uh oh. The socket's bottoming out, I think. Yeah, it's bottoming out on the bottom of there. Now we're even more screwed. This is gonna for sure screw this up, but oh yeah, it's already hard around. Wonderful. That failed completely. The whole seal just broke. Right in half. Oh! Well, that puts me at a standstill. What a huge bummer. What a huge bummer. So, I'm gonna have to find another one of these, sadly. And, uh... See if I can't get a friend to drill the bottom of this out so I can get the slide all the way on because obviously that didn't work at all with the chisels. I was trying to use the chisel on it and it completely fell into pieces. So major bummer, major bummer, major bummer. I don't know what else to say. Alrighty, it is the following day and a lot has happened. Um, first thing being, I have a new seal. This is a national brand. Not that it's really any different than Timken. In fact, it probably... Um, I use, I've used National and I've used Timken both for seals and bearings and stuff like that. I had good luck with both, so I'm not super worried about the brand. But, the exciting thing that I have now is... Oops, it's upside down. The exciting thing I have now is Luke's Special Tool. Yeah! So what this is, this is a piece that's been machined out with the depth correctly to fit through the back of it. With a nice flat surface at the end here. So I now have a specialty tool for installing these. And another thing I realized actually when I was doing it is that there is no way that this speedy sleeve there is no way that this speedy sleeve would have actually fit through this oil pump. So it's probably a good thing that I did it the way I did it and screwed it up. So now I got to redo it because otherwise I would have realized when it was too late that that's not going to work. So I'm going to quick throw the oil pump on the front of this thing right now, and then um, we will go forward with throwing that speedy sleeve on. And fingers crossed it'll work this time. go got the pump gear lined up with the crankshaft I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on alrighty now, for the moment of truth, slide the speedy sleeve in here. Fingers crossed this tool's gonna actually work. I'm gonna use my uh, four ounce hammer for this one because you don't want to be swinging too hard at it. That's a good sound I like hearing. Heck yes. We are in business. Boys, look at that. The Luke special tool coming to the rescue. Ha ha ha. Win. That is amazing. That makes me very happy. So now I gotta slip the crankshaft seal in. Well, I didn't realize it until just now, sadly, but uh, my phone died, so, yep, whoops. 
but you really didn't miss a whole lot. I'll get you up to speed real quick. All I did was slide the uh, seal on. I used a 32 millimeter socket to seat it flush and then slid the crank pulley back on there. And that's really it. I'd recommend putting a little bit of anti-seize on there because it's going to help you out in the long run. And then another thing I've heard actually from a lot of people is that the uh, different oil pumps, the front timing cover doesn't actually fit. But with this one, thankfully we're in good shape and the cover is still going to fit in its place right there. So I'd recommend getting an Asian pump. It's a few dollars more, but it's definitely going to be worth it to be able to fit your timing cover back on there. So anyway, that's really it for that. I'm going to go ahead and leave the belt off until I get a little bit more stuff dressed up. So we're going to move forward now with uh, getting the head gasket drilled out and we'll get that dropped in place next and then uh, keep moving forward. Alrighty, well I actually, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself talking about the uh, head gasket. I gotta do a few other things before I get to the head gasket anyway. One of those is being install the oil pan and the oil pickup. So in the factory service manual it says to torque, put a new gasket on here. I've got one kind of already laying on top. I was just making sure it was the correct gasket before it went crazy. And then drop this oil strainer on here, or the pickup tube, or whatever you want to call it. And this is supposed to be torqued to 99 inch pounds. So I am going to install, well, it's a 66 to 99 is actually what the uh, factory recommends. So I am going to do, um, let's see, run bolts. Actually, not the wrong bolts. Look at this. So the factory oil pump is studded, and those are not. So I'm gonna have to find a couple itty bitty, bitty little bolts. Oh, perfect. So all I did was steal some bolts off of another oil pan. Let me get all these finger tight. There we go. And now. Get yourself a torque wrench that runs down to inch pounds, or if you're not sure what 99 inch pounds is, it is about 8.3 foot pounds. You could probably do 8 foot pounds to be perfectly fine. Then, let's go ahead and just zip these down. I'm gonna kind of make a couple passes. There we go. We're at 101 on that one. 101 on 103 on that one. That's 99 right on the money on that one. So we are in business with that. Alright, now we're in business, blue side down. So I'm going to actually add just a teeny little bit of RTV over the top of this thing before I lay it down there. Just to kind of aid it along in its uh, healing process. When I say not a ton, that's actually a fairly, amount, fairly decent amount. That's looking pretty good. I think that'll be plenty enough just to give it a little bit of extra sealant. Blue side down. Come back with the oil pan. I'm gonna do the same thing on the oil pan. It's gonna be difficult for me to you guys to probably see. I'm gonna add a little layer of RTV on this as well. Not a lot, just a teeny thin layer. Alrighty, let's go ahead and light this back on here. So, got the oil pan with a little layer of RTV on it. It's probably gonna look like a lot more than it is, but it's a teeny little layer. See, got a magnet out of the bottom of the tray to pick up any metal debris. And we're gonna go ahead and ever so gingerly drop her down onto here. Now I'm going to have to probably use a pick and try to get this gasket lined up because the gasket wanted to shift in a little bit. 
Okay, let's see now. I got one started over there. Now I'm gonna go over here and try to shift the gasket some, and line that one up right there. Just a teeny little bit. I just wanna make sure the bolts are centering in and not crushing the end of the, the uh, cork gasket. In all honesty, I would have rather used a rubber gasket, but I did not have one and I did not think about it. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make a quick pass around the bolts. Not looking to torque them right now at this exact moment. I'm just kind of looking to get them all bottomed out. Make it less work for me with my torque wrench here in a minute. I'm just going to kind of do it in a crisscross pattern. Oop, a little too tight. Specs for the manual right here for the oil pan, I don't know if I can get the focus, are 35 to 61 inch pounds. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do this the first time at 35 inch pounds, and then I'm going to move up to 61 after that. Realistically, I should probably do it in a couple of different sequences, but I think this will be okay. Now, for any naysayers saying anything about torque or, uh, extensions being on torque wrenches, when it comes to applied torque, an extension does not make a difference. You can line up 80 extensions, set a torque wrench to 100 foot-pounds, and the fastener, once it beats, is going to be at 100 um, foot-pounds. Anyway, we're going to do a crisscross pattern here and set them all to 60 inch-pounds. Everything's kind of just a little bit snug right now. I'm going to kind of cross over to this side over here. And 60 on that one. over to this. That was a little bit looser. There's 60 on that one. I think I got this one last time. I did. So let's put on this one. 60 there. Alrighty. Oil pan is officially laid down and torqued. So we're on to the right steps. Things are going well. So far, I'm actually not um, going to mess with the rear main at all. So hopefully, um, you guys aren't looking for anything with that because I don't really feel like changing it out because I know mine's not leaking and I don't really want to open up that can of worms. So now I'm going to flip this engine back over. I really need Alrighty, it is now time to do the head gasket modification. So I cannot take credit for this. Um, this was actually done by a Tercel four-wheel drive forum member called Petros. If any of you guys have spent any time on the forum at all, you've probably seen him post. He's commented on almost every post. He's got probably the most uh, responses out of anybody in the Tercel four-wheel drive forum community. But uh, this is one of the uh, tricks that he has used to help increase the coolant flow to the cylinder head. So you can see there's a 5 16 uh, diameter hole drilled in the, the gasket right there and a 3 16 hole drilled right there. So one thing you do want to make out, make sure you're looking for is where the hole cutouts are on these because you definitely can drill the gasket backwards because I've done it. And I put the head gasket on backwards because they lay in almost perfectly upside down. So again, I will link this process or the thread with this post in the uh, description of this video below. But um, we are going to go ahead and pop them out. I'm using a Felpro head gasket and I would recommend you use the same. Um, get the picture lined up with there. There's a cylinder, single hole there, two holes over here, so we're good right there. So we need to drill a 3 16 hole here, and then a 5 16 hole over here. So I'm going to use my highest quality China Freight. I think this is actually a freebie set that I got. Um, 3 16 hole. Oh, let's try to get this eyeballed roughly about in the center right there. Now, he lists in the forum post to not drill this hole any larger than this, oh crap, any larger than that, this size right here. Um, so I'm just going to stick with this. But it's still left over on the head there. We'll kind of try to clean that up a little bit with a razor blade. Scrape this little bit off right here. I'm not going to go too crazy. Just kind of want to get the outer layer of crud off there. Put a little pressure down right there. 
Throw that right about the center there. Nope, not all the way through. Now we are all the way through. I'm gonna get the extra little excess boogers off with a razor blade. Alrighty, a couple extra little holes drilled out there. So let's move forward. Alrighty, a couple extra little holes drilled out there. So let's move forward. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and lay this gasket on here. This gasket's got a little bit of bend to it. If you can see right there inside of the block, there's a couple of holes. Let me pop this gasket back off. There's holes right here and right there, and that's what you're drilling out for extra coolant flow. To my understanding, the coolant will come out of this hole and not flow all the way through the cylinder head because there's no holes right here. And so this is what uh, the method Petros had found that helps out. So, and I'd used it before and I didn't have any issues last time, so we're gonna go ahead and do it again. And uh, now, to do the fun thing, I'm trying to drop this cylinder head on by myself. So, I guess here goes nothing. Right. One thing you're going to want to be careful of is this little uh, dip it by the water pump right here. you got to make sure that slides inside the uh, um, little sensor location. But here goes nothing. Let's see how we go. We are on. That is complete. Alrighty, the cylinder head is officially dropped on, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give everything a quick torque down. Um, I got the manual pulled open right now. You can find all this information in the forum link that I'm gonna link below, which is gonna be a lot better than me trying to run through this. So you can kinda read it at your own pace. But uh, you gotta tighten all the bolts in this pattern right here to 47 foot-pounds. Uh, I'm gonna probably do it Probably finger tight the first time, then I'm gonna do 20, and then I'm gonna do 30. So, that's gonna be kind of how I do this. The idea to use something on the threads of the bolt to keep them from being really dried out and going into dirt and getting all bound up and stuff like that. Um, Petros recommends like a little bit of a thread sealer on there, uh, not like Loctite or anything like that. If you go ahead and read the form, he describes it. Uh, people have used engine oil and stuff like that in the past. I'm gonna probably dab just a little drop of ATF on all these to kind of give them some lubricity as I install them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of run them all down. And then uh, we'll go ahead and move. Get those laid out in there. If you remember from when I was talking in the previous video, this bolt is actually one of the hardest bolts to get out because you gotta get it in just right. So I'm gonna get this washer in here without it flipping over. It's gonna be a task in and of itself. Cool, we got it in there. And then now I'm gonna have to probably wiggle this cam gear just a skosh. Careful, because it's obviously not torqued down yet. There we go. Now, there we go. So let's see, it's pulling itself together. I'm going to go ahead and torque these in three passes. Let's see, I'm going to do 15, 30, and then 47. So, do one. Seven. Eight. Nine. There's 
10. So now let's jump up to we'll do 30 the next pass around. Next, the final one, we're gonna go to 47. Seven. Two. Make sure we're still recording, we are. Three. Four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is it. We are done. We officially have a cylinder head torqued down and ready to rock and roll. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the valve cover on it right now. And then uh, probably button up a couple of little other small odds and ends, probably off camera. Because once I get it running, i got to go ahead and check the valve lash anyway to make sure that's sitting pretty good. Make sure nothing's changed with that recently at all. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. The engine's getting together, finally. I cannot wait to clean the garage up and get this mess taken care of. This is going to be really, really, really nice. One thing you're going to want to make sure that you look out for when you go ahead and get this thing dropped on is that this little rod right here is actually lined up inside of this. It's not a bad idea to actually just pull this thing off, drop the cylinder head off, and then put this thing on afterwards as opposed to trying to drop it as a whole unit. Uh, and if you do mess up and do miss it, you can just pop these two bolts off and then relay it on. Just make sure you got a new, new gasket for that. I hope you guys are finding this helpful, please feel free to leave any sort of constructive feedback you would like on the comments below. I will gladly take any sort of anything you can dish. Um, I'm wondering my way through this. My plan is to actually do a really good full complete teardown and, and, and inspection, cleaning and rebuilding of an engine video when I get my 86 Tercel back together, which will hopefully be sometime this spring, but who knows, I keep saying that with every other project that I have. And uh, kind of learning my way through it right now while I do this, and then... Uh, the next one, hopefully, I can do a really, really, really good job on. Split the whole manifold apart. I'm going to talk about porting the cylinder head out and porting the manifold with a gasket, just doing a port match and a bunch of other stuff. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a little ways down the road. I'm just trying to make sure that I do a halfway decent job before I dive into that project and do a bad job filming it. So, all righty. Well, officially back together ish for the most part. I think it's back together as much as it really can be until I drop her in the car and get the other belts on and everything else and put some 710 in it and some other fun stuff. But uh, threw a new uh, new belt on it, threw a new distributor O-ring on it. The old one wasn't leaking, but they're like $2 on Rock Auto, which if you've never bought things from Rock Auto, you should check them out. Um, if you add the car to your garage, you will get emails every time things go on clearance or wholesale or whatever their terminology is for it because I bought a lot of parts really cheap. I think I bought fuel filters for like... 40 cents a piece. It was something ridiculously cheap like that. And then, uh, well, I figured while I had it apart, I might as well throw some new spark plugs in it. I changed the spark plugs when I was over in Pennsylvania on my way through my big road trip earlier this year, but I have these Bosch Platinum Plus 2s, which is kind of like the Bosch Platinum Plus 1s, except for everything's better in 2s. Like, tacos are better in 2s. Two Mountain Dews is better than one Mountain Dew. Um, two t <laughs> We'll bleep that part out. But, uh, yeah, embarrassing. But, uh, yeah, she's together. Hopefully this will slow the leak down, or the leaks down. It's an old Toyota engine. I didn't really do an amazing full reseal on it, so if it leaks a little bit here or there, I won't be too terribly surprised. But, uh, I'm excited. Can't wait to get this thing back on the road. I haven't driven this car in, like, two... Two weeks now, two and a half weeks about, and that's, that's a long time for me. I miss this girl. She's she's my baby. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a new clutch cable in it. 
since the old one's probably stretched out, I don't really know. Never done it before, but it looks fairly straightforward. I mean, it's a cable. And then, um, maybe some other stuff. I don't really remember what I was going to do. And figure out what bolts I'm forgetting, because it looks like there's a lot of bolts over there. It's kind of scary. It's fine. I just made it better. Improved. And then, uh, maybe I'll change the struts out too, because I know I need struts, but maybe I'll just save that for another time. They're a little bit clicky and clunky and knocky, because they're cheap. But, anyway, enough yakking. Um, I guess probably going to wrap it up for me for this video. I think the next video I'll throw it in and get her back running, and I'm going to get it timed and stuff like that. Enough yakking for me. Hope you guys have a great night, and I will see you at the next video, which will be hopefully this week sometime. So, adios.